Today we're in Henniker, New Hampshire, a town that prides itself on being the only Henniker in the world. For a small town, it has a lot. For instance, Pat's Peak Ski Area, where I am right now, is their playground, their backyard. Also, it's home to New England College, which is a big draw for people because it's nestled in this quintessential New England town. We begin our day at a coffee shop and bakery where locals come here for their caffeine and sugar fix. Then we head close by to New Hampshire's oldest used bookshop, which you could spend hours, maybe days, perusing these gems along the bookshelves. Our adventure for the day takes place at the local but known around New England ski resort for some skiing with the race team director, and I get to learn more about the history of this great Henniker gem. Down the road is a charming inn that's known for its restaurant, which focuses on bringing global flair to local ingredients. And last but not least, a date night with my husband at a cozy restaurant and pub right along the Kentuckook River. I'm extra excited. We have a great day today because I live very close to here and Henniker is part of my heart. We've got a great itinerary for you, but coffee first. Welcome to Abigail's Bakery and Cafe, uh, previously known as Abby's Cafe here in Henniker, New Hampshire. We started Abigail's Bakery in 1978 and my mother bought it from my grandmother and then now my brother and I are kind of taking over Abigail's Bakery over in Ware, New Hampshire. Uh, and then when I saw this one up for sale, I contacted Abby right away and I said, I, this is a dream for me, um, having a cafe and having it be right in Henniker, just a town over from the bakery. Um, I thought it would be perfect. So my thoughts are really trying to incorporate farm to table menu items using local farms and gardens and uh, pastry makers uh, around New Hampshire. And um, my mother also owns a farm in Washington, New Hampshire, so they have a lot of yummy meats to offer that we can put on the menu, so we're really looking forward to that. I love that everyone that comes in, all the employees know their names, they've memorized their drink orders, and it's definitely a spot where you can come in and grab the local newspaper and sit down and just enjoy an hour in here. Um, it's a very comfortable um, place and very homey and it's definitely a wide range of the locals um, and then the college students as well. Good morning. Good morning. Good to see you and welcome. Your These are for you. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, these are gorgeous. So I had Joanna bring me some of your beautiful tulips from the Grow Love Company. And your tulips are kind of all over little shops who do CSAs. Tell me about this, yeah. your business. Yeah, so I am a photographer by trade. It's what I've done my entire life, but my passion is gardening. I started um, researching flower farming and through Instagram, the World Wide Web, I met this woman, Emily Von Trapp in Vermont offering a course on forcing tulips in the winter. So I hopped on it right away. Yeah. Loved it, loved it, loved it. I did this course, I came home from Vermont, yeah. renovated my chicken coop <laughs> that no longer was in use yeah. or of service um, into a really small greenhouse. Yeah. We put a wood stove in it and we grew 10,000 tulips our first year, our first season. Wow. And it was a success. Over the course of like how many months? Um, it starts in January okay. and it goes up through May. And so we're in Henniker, but I've seen them in Concord and yeah. Hopkinton. Yes. And it's like, yeah. And there's little shops that I've gone into and there's bouquets of the Grow Love flowers that you can buy. Yes. Yes. We um, deliver up to New London, all the way out to the seacoast. There's a shop out in Kittery. Yep. Oh, Maine nice. That okay. takes them. And um, you have your website coming up. Yes. Yes. It is thegrowlovecompany.com. Perfect. Yeah. I am very excited, and what I'm really excited about is there's zero chemicals on these. Yes, absolutely. Love. No pesticides. No pesticides. We're not certified organic, but we practice organic yeah. methods. This is awesome. Thank you for You're meeting welcome. me here. You're welcome. Enjoy your flowers. Yeah, I'm going to enjoy my flowers and my day in Henniker. We're going to the, um, the book farm. Awesome. The oldest used bookstore in New Hampshire, so right here in Henniker. This place is such a gem. Enjoy. 
Thank you so much. You're welcome. Cheers. Cheers, Cheers. to flowers. <laughs> Girl love. Girl love. <laughs>
Welcome to Pat's Peak. We are the only Henniker on Earth, and we just received uh, six to eight inches of snow over the last two storms, and we've got another eight to 10 coming tomorrow. So we're gearing up for a great weekend of skiing and riding, and we're gonna be in great shape. Pat's Peak has been owned by the same family for the last 60 years. We're one of a, only a handful of ski areas in New England that are still family owned and operated. And uh, they are great stewards of the facility. They do a fantastic job of making sure that we put out the best product that we can. I've been here for myself 31 ski seasons and uh, they're a fantastic family to work for. They make sure that we always have everything we need. It's just always been a very accessible ski area. We teach the little guys how to ski and newbies, in introduce them to the sport. It's a nice learning environment here. We've got three separate beginner areas. We have the beginner area for the never evers over there. Then we've got a step up over here. And then we've got the valley slopes. And then once they graduate the valley slopes, we've got some beautiful beginner terrain, both on the backside with Cascade Basin. And then we've got some great beginner runs off the top, which make for a nice mile and a half run down the mountain. While we are a beginner-focused facility, we've got enough stuff to keep everybody else busy. We've got one of the steepest ski trails in southern New Hampshire, in southern New England for that matter, our hurricane ski trail, which is top to bottom bumps. Uh, I'll put that against anything that Vermont can offer. It's real steep. We've got some great blue trails and uh, intermediate runs. So we've got everything for everybody. So we have a, a semi-private Pat's Peak Ski Club that partners with the ski area. And uh, they do a fantastic job of, of running the, the alpine racing component here at the ski area. And they've produced some really good names over the years. And uh, they traditionally uh, have a very, very competitive program. And I know Robbie's gonna speak a little bit further about that, but uh, they've got an excellent uh, roster of athletes this year. And uh, I keep seeing the results and they're doing a great job of competing head to head with other ski areas that may be a little bit bigger than us, but. Uh, we let them know we're there and sometimes we take first place. All right, I'm here with the head honcho. We're gonna go do some runs, maybe one or two, do some bumps. Sure, let's also go ski Hurricane and maybe FIS. All right, let's go. Let's go. I'm Robbie Hahn, I'm the Pat's Peak Ski Team Program Director. This is my second year as Program Director, but this is, I wanna say, my 35th year being affiliated with Pat's Peak Ski Team. I've coached many places, but I always wanted to come back here and run this program. And uh, eight years ago, my family moved here into Hopkinton and uh, had a chance to come back and coach and, and waited my turn to become a program director. This is my 26th year of coaching ski racing. You know, I've been very fortunate to grow up in and around the ski business. Um, I got to coach, you know, I coached at the Holderness School, New Hampton School, uh, Waterville Valley Ski Academy. And I gotta say, it's just so nice to be home at my home ski area, coaching kids from the grassroots level. And it's, I love, I have to say, I love the age group, uh, you know, U10s and U12s. I find that very rewarding to work with these kids. Uh, they're sponges for knowledge, and it, you really can make great strides in a short period of time. For people that can't, you know, or think that they can't afford ski racing and that skiing's an expensive sport, I mean, we alone have a, a, a scholarship program called the Peter Holland Scholarship Fund that we're willing to give money to families to help offset the cost of ski racing. There's also other programs through the New Hampshire Ski Racing, Alpine Racing Association that you can get the Josh Russell Memorial. There's also one through New England's Masters. And people really want to get kids into the sport. And we realize that it's an expensive sport. So we're trying to create avenues for kids to be able to participate. I will take off work any day to ski. That was fun. Me too. That was a lot of fun. I would do that again. I'm coming back this weekend, so. I'll see you this weekend. I'll see you this weekend. Hey, so where can people find out more information about scholarships, ski team, all that stuff? Well, if they go online, they can find all the information there. On the website, yes. on social media. It's a great team, great mountain. I'm psyched that you had time to chat with us today. Well, thank you. And now we're heading over to Colby Hill, right down the road. That's a great place. Right? You go and have a lot of fun. I know. Well, hey, thank you. Thanks, Kate. All right, we'll see you later. See ya. <laughs>
This could be the moment we've been waiting for at the chance to feel alive. We always believe that we're not just selling and servicing vehicles. To be involved with teachers and students creates a purpose for everything we do on a daily basis. And from the first moment when I saw the first bus and how excited they were to enter the dealership and I saw the smiles and then to see the bus number two and bus number three and now you have almost 100 kids filling up the showroom floor. It was truly incredible. We believe in making the experience easier and we wanted to bring the joy in the process. We wanted to see a smile when somebody buys a vehicle. I think now it's, it's almost our way to pay back to the community that has rewarded us over so many years. To nominate a teacher, a class or a school, or apply for funds, please look for Keep Driving Foundation on BerlinCity.com. I'm Brad Page, President and CEO of Kenny Bunk Savings. Welcome to our bank. We embody our values, trust, integrity, proactive, and empathy, demonstrating it day in and day out for the benefit of our customers, communities, and importantly, our employees. For us, it's more than just the big check moments. Although those are great too, we give over a million dollars away each year to our communities. If this is a culture you would thrive in, think about a career with us. Check us out on social media or on our website, where you can really get a sense of who we are and what we do. A promise, a purpose, and people who believe in both. That's Kenny Monk Savings. Welcome to Colby Hill Inn and the Grazing Room in Henniker, New Hampshire. We are a 14-room bed and breakfast, or inn, and um, a farm-to-table restaurant. And we do special events, including weddings, birthday parties, retirement parties. Our mission has always been being farm to table. We have found it a struggle to work with local farmers, particularly during COVID. A lot of farmers uh, became short staffed and they didn't want to come out as far to Henniker anymore, or they changed their model or focused more on uh, developing a CSA program for the local community. We lost several farms at that time and we have a good amount of acreage here, so we decided why don't we try to expand our own farming and become a little bit more self-sufficient while still supporting farmers in the area. So. Yeah, it's very important for us to support our local farmers um, and it's very important to me to be true to the fact of farm to table dining. Um, you know, New Hampshire and New England, I think, is kind of at the, was at the forefront of it um, in the States, um, you know, uh, with being, uh, being direct and local. I have a background in global cuisine, um, so that's reflected in the uh, menu here. So you'll find anything from Malaysian cooking to Korean to Italian and to, to Polish, to, Polish yes. to Spanish tapas. So it's and the menu is constantly evolving. Um, I take pride in that; drives him crazy. But <laughs> but we but um, that's just whatever's available, local, um, and it also keeps things interesting not only for us and my staff but for the customers. So every time you come here, there will always be something different and new on the menu. All right, Kate, I hope you're hungry. Mm. Oh, wow. Okay. This smells and looks delicious. All right, so uh, you, we have our grilled pear salad. Um, yep. This is with a, a Mad River blue cheese, walnuts, okay. pomegranate, so apple, balsamic vinaigrette, uh, some munch, and red sorrel. We have our tapas trio platter, current tapa trios platter. We have it was this grilled octopus salad, eggplant oh, spread, nice. lamb chorizo meatballs, Mallorcan almonds, uh, oh olives, and some grilled bread. And then we have my Oma's pierogies. Um, this is her uh, pierogi dough recipe. But, oh uh, my gosh! Today it's filled with uh, sweet potato roast pear. Um, served with the dill cream cheese and caramel. Polish. Thing. Yes. We're big fans of pierogi, but I've never had it like this. <laughs> oh, awesome. Well, I hope you enjoy. Thank you so much. Right. Another thing that makes us stand out from other restaurants is we've done events. We started with weddings and birthday parties kind of at demand. And we have some really unique 
spaces on the property, so we started creating private dining spaces. We have uh, Into the Woods space, which has a light canopy up above, and it can fit two really romantically, or we can fit up to 50 people for like a rehearsal dinner for a wedding. We've done private dinners or picnics in our gazebo. Uh, this winter, we cleared out room one, which has a wood-burning fireplace, and we made it look really romantic, especially at Valentine's Day and over that period. And we had about seven couples book the room as a private dining space. But our goal has always been uh, to become a dining destination. We knew it was gonna be a challenge being in a rural location like this, but um, we're always really happy and to know that it's working when we hear people are coming from Boston just to stay here and have dinner here. What a nice little stop on a very, very busy day. It's beautiful here. This atmosphere is calming. It's just, I love it. The food is delicious. So I'm gonna sit here, I'm gonna have some appetizers and then go meet up with my husband Merrick to have a dinner later on. Alex Ray lightens up New Hampshire. <laughs> if you're not proud of it, don't serve it. I love that. He has a special way of being. This is interesting. It's a garage door opener. <laughs> that you can't fault him for being successful. What happened to the mouse hole? You're lucky if you have those kind of people in your society and in your life. Who can I talk to? My name is Alex Ray, and I live in Holderness, New Hampshire, and I'm the founder and owner of the Common Man Restaurants. Back in 70, I wanted to build a little restaurant in Ashland after I went to cooking school. My children we live on the second floor, and I sat on the front steps out here saying, what should we call it? And I said, how about the Common Man? This town only had 1,200 people, so you could get the full complement of what types of people we have. That's what we started, a little restaurant with 40 seats, and that was 51 years ago. You know, there's something interesting that the deviation of the common man over the standard restaurants, and that is that every time we have a new business, it's different. It's not a cookie cutter operation because it's more fun for our customers. I remember when a guy said to me, you're not corporate material, and I just think, I don't want to be. We fought not to be. And I'm very proud of that and staying in New Hampshire because once you get to know everybody, it's like a big family right to the borders, and we know the state, and they know us, and that works. After 50 years of this, I still am very proud of our family. I love the word, the common man family. I'm Kevin Daniel, and I'm glad you're here at Daniel's. Thank you for coming. In the 70s, we, we started Daniel's. It was a 24-seat restaurant, and over the next 40 years, we expanded to, uh, to grow to this 125-seat restaurant, added a function room, a gift shop, and the outdoor dining. So it took 40 years, and we're still growing. We're pretty much a destination place. People come and they keep coming back year after year after year. And, and many things in the menu we just can't take off because they keep waiting and come back and have the same item again. We try to buy locally sourced items and, and pack our menu with that. We use even the beers and the ciders and different things on the menu. We try to get locally with the Hanneker breweries right up the road and we have them. That looks really, really good. That's exactly what you wanted. Oh, yeah. On like a snowy, cold night. Oh, Ooh. Chicken avocado. Oh, wow. Pasta. Thank you so much. This looks amazing. Thank you so much. Yes. The salmon sesame. Thank you. All the food we need. <laughs> <laughs> this looks delicious. What did you get again? You've got a pasta, pasta dish. primavera. Yum. It looks amazing. And right. it smells good, too. Henniker is not in any particular area, like it's not in the Sun Pea area, it's not in the um, uh, Monadnock area, it's its own little area. And people have, uh, families have stayed in town and grown and, and their kids have moved in and taken over the different businesses in town. And here we are, we've become part of the town. I'm proud of that. And the town's people love us and use us. Over the years, we, as we built, we added 
the different dining room areas, and now we're up to 125 people from the 24 that we started out with. We also added a function room where we do weddings. We've hosted governors and, and senators and politicians and families and weddings and lovers over the years, and we continue to. We've had an outdoor deck over the years, and uh, that deck is oh, right along the river. It's beautiful. We also have a gift shop upstairs that my wife Judy started, and it's been there for the last 40 years. And I think once again, it's something that people like to come back for, especially at Christmas. Customers come back and they like to see the same faces wait on them. It makes Daniels have that uh, comfortable feel. So we built it, we built everything, we expanded, and, and we still continue to have that, uh, um, that consistency from year to year to year with staff and with the food. And some people just think it makes uh, like, like a warm hug to come back over and over. With the amount of time that we spend here over at Pat's, right. I feel like we should come here more often. We should. And we should bring the kids. This is very good food. They would love it. I know. I know of someone who would love the pasta primavera. Who? Seba. Oh, yeah. They he love, love that. I know all the kids would love the salmon. This is oh, fantastic absolutely. food. All right. And I love this, um, this view, and it's snowing, and it's just so wonderful up here, and I'm having a date night with my husband. I know, and I love the bridge. <laughs> the bridge. He's talked about the bridge since we got here. It's very exciting. There's two covered bridges here. It's really a very, very cute place here. Henniker is awesome. We had a packed day. I mean, from start to finish, we met some great people. So you can come up here and follow my itinerary or explore for yourself. There's so much more to see either way. We'll see you next week. Sorry, I gave you like an arm hug. Is that it's all right. cool? That's cool. <laughs> the bro hug. Here's Kate. I'm going to throw up. You want me to clap? <laughs> I'm sorry, does that work? Yeah. Okay. Okay, because there was nothing. Hey, I, I was like, there's nothing on my fork. <laughs> my first ever shoot, I was talking with my hands and knife. I've come so far. I've come so far. <laughs> and I know you're rolling. <laughs> <laughs> Waiting for the mishap. <laughs>